Some people have been bullied. Some people are just stressed out. Some people are insecure. Some people are fat and overweight. I call myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the f you are, nothing's going to change. In this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear, you're just a little bit. No, man, you might be fat. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling. That challenge and feeling of, of, of that person waking up at 3.30 in the morning and saying, hey, push your shit on, we're going for a run. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro, get your shit on, man. Stop being a punk. It's all about the pretty mind. So what's the pretty mind? So let's say it's day one of a job interview. We all know what it feels like. You have your clothes laid out. You got your food ready to go in the morning. You've been preparing for weeks and weeks and weeks. You show up and you bring your best self. You get the job, Merry Christmas. All right, after a couple months, you start showing up to work a little later, you don't look as good, your clothes aren't laid out, your breakfast isn't ready, your mind gets softer. We do that in everything in life. When New Year's coming up, guess what? You don't have a pretty mind. Repetition every day, stay hard. I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. The mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor set for 91. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but that factory said, uh-uh, we're not going past 91. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering at all times of your life. The mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities, it knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. You have to figure out ways, and everybody's different. That's how the book kind of talks about, like we all have these things about, you know, five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40% I'm, you know, I'm feeling pain, at 40% I'm feeling pain, 
that's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's staying all. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things, you start to believe it. Because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back in your mind. And say, okay, let me see if I can go 45 percent And once you start giving yourself more and more hope and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, what, what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. Well, at that time of year again, we start to feel real happy. Why? Because we're, we're not going to work. If you believe in Santa Claus and you celebrate Christmas, you're looking forward to Santa Claus coming on a chimney eating some presents. It's a real good time of year, so in that good time of year, we start to feel real good about ourselves. We start to feel great. So we start making promises to ourselves about, hey, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to be better at school. I'm going to be better here, be better there. Guess what happens? The real Merry Christmas happened when all of that noise is gone, it's quiet, and it's you against you, and now all of the endorphins are gone. And I promise me by getting up early and getting after it to go lose weight and study harder, guess what? It's a lot harder now. That repetition becomes a lot harder now. So a lot of us can't do things on their own. So find somebody in your life. So when you throw that cow in, they throw that motherfucker back at you and say you're not done yet. How are you going to feel when you accomplish this goal coming from that place? Coming from the fucking hell you came from. A lot of people start from a good starting point. They have a good foundation. What if you can surpass all of them? If everybody who was way up here started up here, and you had, you started with no legs. You had to grow the legs to even start walking, and then crawling, and then running. And then you start passing people and all this given to them. This might be exactly what I need. The darkness is exactly what I need. It's how you look at your situation.